In late March of 2016, the science has discovered something really unusual. For the first time in history, we have actually seen a black hole. We haven't just heard it, we haven't just seen the gravitational effects of a black hole, and we haven't just seen its X-ray uh, emissions that are quite common, but we've actually detected optical light from a location known to have a black hole. This is pretty exciting, and this is What The Math. Welcome and enjoy the video. And to show you exactly what we've detected and how it actually been found, I'm going to be using Universe Sandbox 2 to actually recreate the solar system where this black hole is located, because there is actually still a star in the vicinity, and that is why we were able to kind of see what's happening. So let's actually start a completely new simulation here, and we're going to place a black hole in the middle. And here you go, so this is a black hole called V404 Cygnia, it's about 9 masses of sun, so it's a relatively small black hole uh, in terms of its size, in terms of its mass compared to obviously other supergiants. Now, let's see what's happening here. So we know that there is a black hole in the vicinity here, but we also know that it has a companion star, and its star is a little bit smaller than the sun. Now, so if this is the black hole right here in the middle, the sun is actually going to be placed a lot farther away. As you can see, sun is huge compared to this black hole. So we're going to place it at around a million kilometers, or actually 10 million kilometers away from the black hole. So there you go. So it's going to be orbiting the black hole. And this is actually what's really happening in this particular system. And uh, as it starts orbiting the black hole, because it's actually relatively close, a lot of its gas gets sort of streamed away from the black hole. It's basically, it gets sucked off into the black hole and creates this really beautiful vortex. So to, to create this vortex visually, we're going to go into the rings here. We're, we're going to add rings to this black hole. So it's going to be anywhere between 9,000 kilometers and about 10 million kilometers in distance. Now this is what would happen if you just added regular rings, so this is what it is going to look like. It sort of creates this accretion disk around this black hole, but we want this to be a little bit different. Let's actually use slightly different color. I'm going to use uh, silicates here, and we're going to place a spiral that is going to be exponential in the way it grows. And here you go. So this is what I was kind of looking for. There we go. Now the only problem is that it doesn't actually start from the star, but as you can see the star sort of sucked in uh, this uh, this particular vortex. So we, we can actually add a few more. So let's add a few more and I'm going to also increase some uh, revolutions here because we want to have different types of uh, vertices. And so what you can kind of see here is if you were to sort of look from the from the angle where it's more visible, um, a lot of the material basically gets sucked out of the star and sort of slowly gets to uh, to be sucked in inside of this black hole. And this is essentially what creates this accretion disk around this black hole. Now, as this accretion disk is created and as it starts sort of orbiting uh, the black hole faster and faster, uh, the energy released by this accretion disk start to be uh, starts to basically uh, be increased uh, dramatically and uh, it reaches the point where the entire matter here starts to glow uh, because of the heat and as it starts glowing as it essentially acquires this glow it starts emitting different types of energy now obviously it uh, emits a lot of x-ray radiation closer to the black hole and this is actually what we qu see quite a lot where we've been able to detect various x-ray emissions from the um, uh, the region of black hole because at some point this uh, really highly energized material gets sort of ejected by the black hole usually uh, in two directions, directly up and directly down. And we've seen this many times, uh, and this is actually how the idea of a quasar is born as well. But this time around, we didn't just see the x-rays, we've actually been able to see the optical waves, in other words, just regular color. So at some point, as this material starts spinning around the black hole, and as it sort of starts glowing, it started to emit uh, actual visual glow, and this is actually what it kind of looks like. You can kind of kind of see it right here. And so essentially, we've finally been able to see a black hole. So it's not as black as you may actually think, because we can sort of see it. Now let's see if we can add some more rings here, just to make the spiral more more pronounced. And we're also going to create uh, different colors of this spiral here. And, okay, I think I've added a little bit too much, but there you go. This is kind of what um, it actually looks like uh, in a binary system where there's a black hole and another star next to it. So, a lot of the material basically gets sucked off from the sun 
and goes inside the black hole until the sun no longer exists and at this point black hole just stays and becomes a lonely object now um, i've done this a few times and I, it actually looks di different every single time i i do recommend you try this yourself um if you have universe sandbox 2 and if you don't it's probably a good time to buy it because it's a pretty awesome game uh, but i i'll show you another simulation i've created recently that had a slightly larger sun and slightly larger black hole, but a completely uh, different looking sort of uh, binary system. So here we have a very large amount of accretion disk next to the black hole that's orbiting around it really, really fast. And this is actually where the glow would be created. And then you have this sort of a spiral going out into the star. Basically, this is the material that gets ejected from the star because of the gravity and slowly sort of makes its way toward the center of the black hole. So this is another pretty cool uh, simulation of what a Christian disk might, might look like if you were to come closer to the black hole. Obviously, there would be a lot more material, but my computer unfortunately cannot handle this much. This is already a sort of a limit of what we can do here. And you'll notice that once in a while there will be these particles that get ejected really, really fast into the outer space here. Um, now. Unfortunately, this is not exactly how it works. We know that for some unknown reason, black holes eject things only up and down, or at least that's what we believe. And there is uh, no mathematical model for what, how and why they do that just yet, but we know that this is how it usually happens. Uh, so it's very unlikely that things would actually fly out this way, although it's possible, but it's more likely that they'll go up and down, mostly probably because of the spin and the way the space is bent around the black hole. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and I just wanted to recreate this binary system where we have a black hole and a star, and just to give you a visual um, representation of what this might look like. And what's really interesting about this particular system called V404 Stignii is that um, it's actually been quiet for many, many years. We didn't really see anything uh, from it, and it's actually also the closest black hole to us. It's only about... 8,000 light years away from the sun, which is uh, not as close as you think, but it's the closest black hole that we actually know of. And after about 26 years of this system being completely dormant and not really doing anything, it suddenly started to have these outbursts of X-rays, which basically indicated that there was material that, that was being uh, dragged in, inside the black hole, and it sort of got ejected at ridiculously high speeds and produced a lot of energy. At some point uh, during these 26 years, this was actually also the brightest object we could detect in the universe because of the X-rays it was emitting. But it was not until very recently, specifically for me, only last week, uh, late March of 2016, that we've finally seen a visual representation of this black hole. And according to the scientists, if you have a moderately powerful telescope, you might even actually be able to see it yourself if you were to look in the vicinity of this black hole. There is actually a bit of a flicker that you might be able to detect. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this, and if you did, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like and share this video, and don't forget to check out some of the other space videos I've posted previously, or even check out the whole black hole series I did in the past. Thank you for watching, game you later guys, I'll see you in the next video, and as always, bye bye.